and take a belt and catch the left forefoot with the belt. And hold that belt as close to the foot as you can without leaning way over to that side. Then rotate your chest to the right or away from that, that foot. And that should put a little bit of slack in the belt. At that point, walk your hand in a little closer to the foot and then turn the chest back to the center. And you should have quite a bit of traction on that left side of the shoulder girdle. It's gonna stretch the pecs. You also want that stretch in the back from the, or in the space between the shoulder blade and the spine. And then rotate the left upper arm outward until you feel the top of the shoulder blade release down slightly. And keeping a firm hold on the belt, pull the trunk away from that foot. You can even tilt your head away from the left arm. Bring the head back to center first, and then release the foot. And switch to the right leg. Right forefoot. And again, the setup, hold as close to the foot as you can without leaning way over that direction. Then turn your chest away from the foot, so that would be to the left this time. That will put a little bit of slack in the belt. Walk your hand in, take away that slack, then turn the chest back to the center. Then rotate the right upper arm bone, the right humerus, outward until you Feel the top of the right shoulder blade release slightly down the back. Then try and move your trunk away from the right foot. And you can even tilt your head away from that right arm. So there's obviously quite a bit of work for your hand to do here, to hold on to the belt. But if you're working to pull the rib cage away from that foot, you're gonna feel your abdominal muscles kick in quite a bit also. Particularly on the right side. the head first, bring it upright, and then release the right leg. Sit with the hands behind the pelvis, behind the hips, and keep your right hand behind, bring the left hand into the front, hold the chin in, lift the crown of the head up, 
Inhale, as you exhale, turn your pelvis a little bit, but also your trunk around to the right. And you can turn the shoulder girdle, turn the chest, turn the head, look to the right. Meanwhile, actively stretch the legs, especially the left leg. Try to stretch the left leg even a little bit more than the right leg. There's a tendency with these, these twists, twists, these seated twists, for the ribs on the side you're turning to to kind of poke out a little bit. So make sure that those right ribs stay in. And when the ribs are in, you're going to feel the abdominal muscles wrapping around your trunk. You're going to feel those muscles working to help rotate you. that. And bring the left hand behind, bring the right hand in front. Start the twist from the right side of the pelvis. So again, chin in, lift the crown of the head up. And on an exhale, start turning to your left. Turn the pelvis a little. Turn the rib cage a little more. Turn the chest a little bit more. Turn the shoulder girdle. Turn the head and the neck around and look to the left. Again, you should feel the muscles that wrap around your trunk, the abdominal muscles. You should feel those muscles working to help rotate you. Keep the legs active, especially the right leg. And release that. Good. Bend your knees, join your feet in Baddha Konasana. Now it's possible that you didn't need a lot of height to sit on for Upavishta Konasana, but now your knees are way, way up, in which case you want to elevate your pelvis more. And it's also possible that you needed a lot of height to sit on in the previous posture, but not as much in this posture. So you can adjust, take a moment to adjust your height as you see fit. Basically, you want your pelvis, the top of your pelvis, to be um, the same height or slightly higher than the the top of the knee as the knee presents here. Then again, use the arm support behind you. First of all, use that arm support so that you don't strain your low back because the back tends to collapse in this posture. And second of all, by supporting the low back and tipping the pelvis a little more forwards, redirect the, the load from your low back into your hip joints and make sure that you don't feel it going into your knee, either of your knees. If you feel pain or pressure on your knees, then the first thing you always want to do is sit higher. Sitting higher at some point as you increase your height, it should take the pain away. 
but if it doesn't, you can also open the knees up a little bit more by not having the feet in quite so close to the pelvis. And then stretch out your legs in Dandasan. And go ahead and come off of the height. And then bend the knees and do Navasana. Mm. So remember in Navasana, the head position is key. You want to make sure that your head is lining up with your spine and not lining up with the wall in front of you. So get the head back. You can keep the eyes forward, but get the head back. And then you really want to push your pelvis down into the floor to support the uprighting of the spine and head. So you want to make a, a real clear connection between that downward pressure and lifting up and out through the crown of your head and getting the whatever part of your spine tends to collapse outward, trying to get that a little more in, into the body. And then from there you can go into side sitting on the left. <clears throat> the cueing here is very similar to what you were doing when you were holding that belt or holding the foot using the belt. You're trying to get tractioning, a tractioning action to your shoulder girdle. Not just on the right arm, but on the left also. So the right arm, the stretch of the right arm is also pulling your shoulder girdle away from your left hand. And as it does that, you can start to feel more and more of your weight in the left hip. And from that left hip, upright the head, lift the crown, and rotate. You're going to feel the right side of the neck working here, that's normal. If it starts to feel like it's doing too much work, where it feels like it might strain, then just turn the head forward again. You can tip the head a little to the left to relieve some of that tension. But at the same time, keep stretching and reaching with the right arm, right shoulder. Then from there, unweight the hand, bring the left hand forward and go into supine. And if you need some support under your head, make sure that you take that. Sometimes it just feels good to have support there initially so that you're not struggling at all to get the to get space in the back of your neck. Turn your head, look to your left, bring the left arm down, and then go over onto your left side. So you're on the shoulder, the hip, the knee, the left foot. Make sure your left foot is planted into the floor here. And then use the leverage of the left shoulder pressing down to upright your head. So again, the cues there our chin and crown of the head lengthening. Make sure that you don't upright your head from your low back. So watch the rib cage there. And then keeping that very stable support from the shoulder, just gradually lower your left ear toward the floor. It's not important that it reach the floor, in, in a way, it 
it's better if it doesn't. And then slowly raise the head back to the center. And repeat that. Back to center, and one more, tip the head, and back to center. Then go back to supine, And look to your right, turn the head, look to the right, bring the arm down, and then go on to that side. And I'll come around here so I'm still facing you. Make sure that right foot is down, right knee, and you're actively pushing the shoulder, uprighting the head. Try also to keep your ribs just underneath your armpit a little bit off the floor here. There's a tendency to kind of rest into the ribs there, but if you really push that shoulder, you can also activate the obliques on that right side and, and prevent the ribs from collapsing down. And then keep the pose stable and just tilt the head to the right. So your head is tipping toward the floor. Hold that for a couple breaths. Then lift it back up, back to center. Then again, tip it toward the floor. And back up. And one more. And back up. And then back to supine. Good, and then look to your right again. Bring the right arm down and come up into side sitting on the right. So feel in that transition how you're lifting your rib cage up, anchoring through your hip. So I want you to reverse that motion. And so the idea is when you come down, first your elbow or your forearm elbow, and then from there, you're not dropping the ribs, you're keeping the ribs supported and you're going directly onto the back of the shoulder and then onto your back. Likewise, when you're reversing that, you get the arm in place and you don't come over and, and, and spend time on your rib cage. You're trying to very quickly get onto the hip so that you can pull the ribs up and really anchor through that hip. So just repeat that a couple more times on the right. And then sit up into boat pose. side sitting on the left and then transition into supine and then 
back to side sitting. Turn the head, get your support in place, and then you want to come right up onto that hip and feel the obliques working to lift you and then feel them continuing to support as you reverse that motion. So this transition in the side sitting is a really important transition for both the coordinating of all of your different parts here, but also for getting the obliques to work in in conjunction with the hip and the shoulder. So you can repeat that a few times. back inside sitting on the left. Bring the right hand down alongside the hip. Stretch the hand away from the head, head away from the hand. Then bend the elbow, rotate the arm around. So this is external rotation. And then move the hand away from the shoulder and the head. Bend it, so reverse that, reverse the rotation, stretch it away from the head. Bend it, rotate it out, reach it over the head. And meanwhile, keep the chin in, the neck long, so keep that very upright head position and keep that stable as you mobilize the shoulder. So neck tension is often shoulder tension that's just creeped into the neck. So if you can free up the shoulders, that will often help to reduce the tension in the neck. The next time the arm comes down, you can sit up into boat one more time. If you want to work a little bit harder, you can lift your feet up. If you have the hamstring length, you can even stretch your legs out, which makes it a lot tougher. So you have to, to really make this an effective abdominal pose. You really need to make sure that if you're going to stretch out your legs, that you don't just collapse into your back when you do that. If the back collapses, then you basically lose a lot of the abdominal activation, certainly what you want from that abdominal activation. So it's really important that when you stretch the legs that the trunk doesn't collapse. If it does, it's better to keep the knees bent. Alright, then go to side sitting on the right. And you can bring your left hand down alongside the hip. Stretch the hand away from the head, head away from the hand. Then bend the elbow, rotate the arm, and reach that arm over, and reverse that. As I try to remind you here, it's not that important that you get the arm to fully stretch, at least for now. Focus more on the space between the shoulder and the neck. And if you feel that space start to narrow or scrunch up on you, then try to get that shoulder blade anchored more so that it doesn't allow the, that space to scrunch up. Make sure your elbow isn't flaring up toward the ceiling. And if insisting on those parameters means that you don't get the arm to fully straighten, that's fine. Good, and then from there, add the lift, so you're lifting the pelvis. 
and back down. So that's when you can reach a little bit more because you're trying to get some momentum going here so that when you move your left leg around, you, you're using some of that momentum. You slide the right knee over and then come up. And you can sit back and come forward into your hip and hands. Then step the left foot back so you end up in quadruped. And then bring your hands a little more forward into a kneeling plank. And upright your head in your kneeling plank. So once again, the cues, shoulder blades moving down, crown of the head lengthening, reaching outward and upward. Make sure that when you're pulling your shoulder blades down, you're not pushing your ribs forward. That is a tendency. So your abdominal muscles in the front are working really, really strongly here to prevent that so that you can isolate that shoulder blade anchoring action without going into a back bend. And you can stretch your hips back from there. And just move gradually here and try to feel what's going on in the shoulder, girdle, neck area. And insist on keeping the maximum space that you can both between the shoulder blades as well as between the shoulder blade, the tops of the shoulder blades and the base of your skull. So again, if you get, if you, even if you can go further back, if you feel that scrunching up on you, either it's narrowing or shortening vertically, then don't go that far. And then forward again. back, keep the chin in, neck long, and forward, and this time from kneeling plank, lower yourself down, and my face down, bring your hands above your head, your forehead down, roll your knees out a little, And then just, just rest for a few seconds here. And then begin to breathe into your low back, into your lower abdomen. Activate your abdominal muscles. Increase the intra-abdominal pressure and lift the lumbar spine away from the floor. Make sure that you're lifting it using abdominals and intra-abdominal pressure and not by just tightening your glutes and your hamstrings. Then draw the shoulder blades down and lift the head a little bit up off the floor. Reach through the crown of the head. Synchronize that reaching action with the shoulder blades anchoring. Make sure that you feel the chin is in, the neck is staying long. Then turn the head to the right and look to your right. A couple breaths and then back to center, then to the left, back.
back to center. Once more to the right. Back to center. And to the left. And back to center, and then down. And then once again, stabilize the low back, draw the shoulder blades down, Lift the head up, reach through the crown of your head, keep the shoulder blades very wide away from each other. So when we say we're anchoring the shoulder blades here, we're anchoring them to the outer upper ribs underneath the armpit and not down toward the pelvis or toward the spine. So the shoulder blades should move downward and apart. And the downward, the amount they move downward is, is not very big. It's just big enough to, again, release that trapezius area across the top of the shoulder girdle. And then once more, turn the head to the right. And back to center. And left. center, and right, and center, and left, and center, and then press up out of it, back to kneeling plank. Once more squatting back, keeping that space in the shoulder neck area. And then into quadruped. Quadruped come up into bear and control the head and neck position here also in bear. Make sure your chin isn't jutting forward. And then walk your hands into your feet. Squat for a moment and come all the way up from there. Good, let's do a calf stretch. You can put your left forefoot on the half dome. Then once again, bring the chin in, lift the crown of the head up, keep the shoulders slightly back, don't pull them too strongly back or you'll tend to pull the shoulder blades together. So you're trying to keep your shoulder blades apart, your shoulder girdle wide and the shoulders just come slightly back. Then you're tilting your head to the right. So the top of the right ear is moving toward the top of your right shoulder. So don't force it. If you feel pain, then 
Just come out carefully. And bring it back to center. Readjust your head position. And then tilt to your left. Tilt the head to the left. back to center, and to the right again. And back to center. Once more to the left. And back to center. And you can step off the height and switch to your right foot. Relax the ribs down, release the buttock down, lift the crown of the head up. Then tilt the head to the right. And reach the left arm forward and outward. Rotating it out so the shoulder blade doesn't elevate. Bring the head up and release the arm. I'm going to sequence it a little differently on this side. I'm going to have you stretch the right arm first, forward rotating it and taking it out to the side. Again, you want the shoulder blade as wide as possible. Then adjust the head, bring the chin in, lift the crown, and tilt the head to the left. really have to pay attention with this that you're not tipping your whole trunk over, so sometime try this in front of a mirror so you can see how much bend is actually coming from your neck and how much is coming from your spine or, or from your, your, your lower spine. You can bring the head up, release the arm, and release the leg. Good. Now let's do a forward bend with the hands alongside the hips. Chin tucked in, crown of the head lengthening. And then you're adjusting the position of the pelvis so that you feel the low back open up. And hand in hand with that, you should feel your abdominal muscles activate. So it should give you the feeling that your abdominal muscles are working to support your lower back and you're not relying solely on the, the extensor muscles near the spine.
and then you're trying to lengthen here. So reaching once again the hands and the head in opposite directions. Shoulder blades away from the head, crown of the head away from the shoulder blades. slowly. Good, let's do a top of the foot stretch, uh, left foot back. Just in general, it helps to, to just always be checking in with that trapezius area. And just to notice if you have a tendency to, to lift your shoulder blades and your shoulders up and kind of hold them there unconsciously. A lot of times we're just unconsciously holding tension there that we don't, we're not even paying attention to. You can switch legs. So these cues of lengthening, bring the chin in, lifting the crown of the head, and in this case, releasing the shoulder blades down, those cues are, are very important. Good. Uh, Trikonasana. Arms forward, feet apart. Align your feet to your right. Align your heels. Stretch the legs, stretch the arms. Again, lift the crown, release the shoulder blades. Inhale, as you exhale, bend to that right side. And then from the back leg, upright the head and turn the head around to look toward the lifted arm. And just gradually keep increasing that turn without forcing. Uprighting and turning. Stretch the legs, stretch the arms, lift up the crown, release the shoulder blades down a bit, inhale, exhale, go to the left. And then uprighting the head as though you're doing it from the back leg, so that stretch of the right leg in this case helps you to extend through the crown of your head which helps you to turn it. Make sure the top arm doesn't get thrown back. That'll jam up the shoulder blade into the neck. Keep it a little more forward and reach. And if you're gonna turn more, turn your chest away from your left shoulder rather than trying to pull yourself around with the right arm. More than that, keep trying to upright and turn your head. Good, and come up, turn the feet in. 
step or hop the feet back to pelvis width, release the arms. And I'd like you to do another forward bend like you did before, with a lot of emphasis on the space here, the length of the neck, the space between the shoulder blades, top to the shoulder blades, and the base of the skull. And of course, make sure that with your abdominal muscles, you are supporting your back so that the extensors along the spine don't have to do all of the heavy, heavy lifting. <clears throat> you can also engage the knees, quadriceps, pull the kneecaps up, rotate your thigh bones out. and try and get the pelvis to rotate a little more forward. I'd like you to squat down into bear and then from bear do downward facing dog. Stretch out your legs. So you don't want to be just leaning into your hands and wrists here. You want to be actively pushing your palm down into the floor. And using that leverage from your palm pressure to actively widen the shoulder girdle and lengthen the neck. Push the palms down, pull the shoulders wider apart, pull the shoulder blades away from the neck, lengthen the crown of the head away from the shoulder blades, then stretch the legs and arms a little bit more and repeat. Then for a moment back to bear. And then depending on which side the computer screen is on, you're going to push with the opposite hand, the hand opposite that side. So in my case, it's my right hand. And I'm going to turn and lift my left and bring my hip down so I'm back to side sitting. And then from there, go back to Upavishta Konasana. And then add whatever height you're, you were sitting on before or whatever height you need at this point to sit on. And feel free to adjust that height as we add variations. So to begin with, you're going to bend your right knee and bring that heel in toward the front of the pelvis. So if that's putting too much pressure on your knee, you might want to sit higher to mitigate that. That's always, that should always be your your first step, if you feel like it's putting too much load on your knee, elevate the pelvis.
this more. Then take the left leg and step it back behind the, the pelvis here. For now, I'm just keeping my foot and ankle dorsiflex, so you can do that also. And which means what you're going to feel is a lot more weight in your, your right hip. In fact, your left hip will be a little bit off the floor. So you can add some height under the right hip or if necessary under both hips so that you can level out your pelvis. Also, if you have the flexibility in your left knee, left quadriceps, you can also take the toes and point them away from the knee. So your right, uh, excuse me, your left leg is in is in a, more of a virasana position rather than having the toes out pointed out to the side like that. It does require quite a bit of flexibility in the quadriceps. So if that's not um, accessible for you, then just again add more height and use the the um, the other leg position that I showed. And then we're going to do another twist from this position. So the right hand comes behind, left hand in front. You can even walk that left hand over towards your right knee. And then you're turning your pelvis, your rib cage, your chest, your shoulder girdle, your head, your neck around. So this posture in particular will tend to exaggerate the tendency for the ribs to shift laterally. So I'm turning to my right. My right ribs tend to move sideways to the right. So I want to recognize that and if necessary just assume that that's what I'm doing. It's somewhat safe to assume that actually. And bring those ribs in a little as I rotate. And not only will that help to keep me rotating on the spinal axis, but it'll also help to get my abdominal muscles to support my trunk better. And you can release that. And you want to stretch out your left leg first, and then your right, so you end up back in Upa Vishta Konasana. Then bend the left knee, bring that left foot in toward the front of the pelvis. And if your left knee just doesn't come all the way down, if the leg is kind of floating, you can put something under it. And then step the right foot back either with the, the foot and ankle dorsiflex, or you can, you can point the toes away from your right knee if that's um, uh, accessible for you and doesn't put strain on your knee or your ankle. You basically want the angle of your thighs here to be symmetrical so that the right angle of the right thigh from the pelvis and the angle of the left thigh from the pelvis is more or less the same. And then we're going to rotate to the left. So the left hand comes behind the hip. If you're sitting on a height, you might need another support under your hand or you might need to put your hand on what you're sitting on. The right hand can come to the front and even walk over toward the left knee if that's uh, doable for you. And then you're turning your pelvis, your, your, your trunk, your rib cage, your chest, your head, your neck around to the left. Now it'll be the left ribs that tend to want to poke out. So bring those left ribs in toward the spine. And you should feel not only 
a better axial twist, axial being around the spine here. But you should also feel more abdominal activation in your twist. And that's, that activation, it'll register as a kind of a squeezing feeling. It's your abdominal muscles are sort of, are sort of squeezing in on your rib cage and your, the contents of your abdomen. And then you want to use intra-abdominal pressure and push against that squeeze. So in other words, your abdominal muscles are squeezing in, your breath is pushing out at the same time. So that's how you unload the spine as you rotate. And go ahead and release that. Then stretch out your right leg first, and then your left, so your back and Upa Vishta Konasana. Take a couple breaths there. And then bring, once more bend the right knee, bring the right foot in toward the front of the pelvis. Step the left foot back, either foot position, whichever one works for you. Get the angle of your thigh bone symmetrical. Support under the right knee if you need to. Then take the right hand behind, left hand in front, turn to the right again. And once again, turn the pelvis, Turn the lower trunk, turn the rib cage, turn the chest, keep the right ribs a little more in here, turn the shoulder girdle, turn the head and the neck around, all of them around to the right. Squeeze with the abdominal muscles in, resist with the intra-abdominal pressure out, and keep all that, keep everything else turning to the right. Then slowly turn your head and neck to the left. And even bring your eyes to the left, even look to the left. It's with your eyes, it feels like with your eyes you're looking over your left shoulder and with your sternum, you're trying to look over your right shoulder at the same time. Watch your breath. And release. Stretch out the left leg, then the right. Couple breaths. And we got the last side coming up. So you're going to bend the left knee first, bring that foot in toward the front of the pelvis, step the right foot back, adjust the foot position, adjust the angle of your thighs relative to your pelvis. Sit tall, take support of the left hand, start twisting to the left, twist everything to the left, use your breath, use your abdominal muscles, keep the spine long, And when you reach your end range, after a few breaths, then keep everything else turned to the left. Slowly turn the head and neck around to the right. Even your eyes, so with your eyes you're looking over the right shoulder. 
And at the same time with your sternum, you're trying to look over your left shoulder as though you had an eye in the upper sternum. And you're trying to look in the other direction with that eye. that. Stretch out the right leg first, then the left leg. So once, one more time you're back in Upavishta Konasana. Then bring, if you can, bring both hands into the front and walk the hands a little bit forward. Or at least if you can, use the arms to help upright the upper part of the spine. So again, chin in, crown of the head lifting, shoulder blades drawing slightly down the back. And then as long as you're able to tip your pelvis forward, you can increase the forward bend. Make sure that you're not getting any dangerous pulling on your inner leg or in in particular on your medial knee. If you start feeling it on the medial knee or up near the pubic bone, you want to back off of that. Keep restoring and even increasing that space between the base of the skull and the tops of your shoulder blades. And then you can come off of your height, whatever you're sitting on. And once again, lie down on your back with your knees bent. And this time, elevate your pelvis on a low block. Now, if you still need some height under the head, take it. So let's say you get here and you still find that your chin is pulling away from your sternum. Then add a little bit of height. You might not need as much height as you would need if you were, you didn't have the block under you. But feel free to take some height under the head if, if that's appropriate. And then bring your, lift your feet up off the floor, bring your knees towards your chest. And as the knees come in, the back of the spine will stretch. And as the back of the spine stretches, if you're on a sticky mat, the, as the head tries to slide further away from your tailbone, the mat will tend to drag the back of the skull back down toward the shoulder blades. So make sure that you adjust the skull position so that you get that stretch all the way up into your neck. Activate the abdominal muscles, use them, and along with your intra-abdominal pressure to stabilize your low back, and then gradually lower your feet back down to the floor.
can remove the block and come down. Then sit up and set yourself up in a psoas release on a bolster. And if you don't have a bolster, then the setup is your half dome is substituting for your bolster and the, your block is substituting for the half dome. Where your shoulder blades are on the uh, half dome and your head is on the block. And you want to make sure that whether it's a it's the end of the bolster that's underneath your upper back or your or the half dome as I'm doing right now, that the height under the head is sufficient so that you feel the chin just drop at least slightly down. You don't want the head to be in a position where your neck is shortening in the back, is allowed to shorten in the back. Then stretch the arms up, reach a little bit to pull the shoulder blades apart, rotate the arms out as much as you can, and then start to move the arms away from each other and gradually reach your arms laterally to widen both the chest as well as the upper back between the shoulder blades. Meanwhile, use, once again, use the outward rotation of the upper arm, the humerus, to help prevent the shoulder blades from elevating towards your head. Even if your arms can go to the floor, I don't recommend that you bring them all the way to the floor. So keep the arms a little bit off the floor at least. And keep trying to stretch outward, emphasize the arms reaching apart more than trying to take the arms further and further back. And then from there, bring your hands towards your hips about two thirds, three quarters of the way, and then you can rest your forearms on the floor with the palms facing up. If you need to make any more adjustments to the posture to facilitate relaxation, go ahead and do that now. Otherwise, when you're ready, you can close your eyes and begin to relax and begin to go inside.